quorum? Do we have enough people online? Yes, we do. We do? Okay, yes. great. All right, everybody, it's one o'clock, so we're gonna go ahead and start, is that all right? Okay, if we're ready. All right, I'd like to call the Skagit Transit Board of Directors to order for April 21st, 2020. The time is now 1 p.m. If you would please stand with me and uh, we'll do our Pledge of Allegiance. So, <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you very much. Um, Whitney's there off camera. I ask her to go ahead and call the roll. My name is Jill Boudreau, I'm the mayor of Mount Vernon. Commissioner Janicki. I'm here. Commissioner Wheaton. Yes, I'm here. Commissioner Browning. Here. Mayor Gear. I'm here. Mayor Sexton. I'm here also. Uh, Mayor Johnson let me know that she was not going to be able to attend. Councilperson Holt. Councilperson Loving. Our CAC Chair Judy Jones. Here. And our Labor Representative Marjorie. Here. Okay. Great, thank you so much. Item four is our public comment. So is there any public comment? If so, if you could unmute, state your name. And I don't see anyone on the Zoom, so we'll go ahead and move along. Item five is our consent agenda with items A, the approval of the March meeting minutes, and B, the approval of claims, payroll, uh, checks, transfers, and direct deposits. Also moved to approve. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Motion by Lori and a second by Lisa. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, aye. same sign. Any opposed, same sign today. Thank you. Motion carries. All right, item six in our full discussion and action items. First up is item A, our monthly budget update report for March. And so I will turn it over to Arden. Go ahead, Arden. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. The monthly budget reports are presented for your review. Items of interest are for revenues. Skadi Transit received $1,028,007 in sales tax revenues for the month of March 2021. This is 11.6% higher than the 920956 collected in March of 2020. Total sales taxes collected so far for 2021 are 3,402,973, which is 7.04% higher than the sales taxes collected during the first three months of 2020. We also received $14,376 in state grants and $60,776 in federal grants. For expenses, some notable capital expenditures, um, email and the messaging system software project upgrades of $43,386, and the Chuckanut Park and Ride HVAC generator upgrade for 11,487. Fuel is within budget. All other expenses were as expected. The current reserve account balances are for March of 2021, operating 5,017,203, facilities 400,000, capital replacement 4,008,153, and a non-designated is 1,503,570 that brings our total reserves to 10,920,925 as compared to 1,915,397 um, in March of 2020. And I, I, I was gonna put a note in here, the reason why uh, our reserves were so much down in March 2020 was, uh, I think I, I remember we brought this up to the board, this was because we borrowed uh, $3 million from our reserves back in just to prepay up front the nine buses that were coming in. Um, so that's why it just dipped uh, this much during this or during this during this month. So recommendation staff recommends the board approve the monthly budget report. Okay. Move to, move to approve. Okay. Peter. I'll second that. Thank you. Motion by Peter and a second by Lori. Any questions for Arden before we take action? I had a question on the chocolate park and ride generator. Go I didn't ahead, think Ron. there was much room there. I, I, 
I'm sorry, Commissioner, can you repeat that? The Chuckanut Park and Ride HVAC uh, generator upgrades. So do we even have a room there or just one? Where's the generator there? We, we, have, we have two 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 restrooms. We have a mechanical room, and then we have another room where we have our backed up um, uh, computer system. So, so it's for the computers and the cameras and stuff is what that generator is for then. Right, exactly. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Item six, six uh, B is the award of coronavirus response and relief support appropriations act fund funds. And Dale is here to lead. Go ahead, Dale. Resolution two zero one zero dash zero nine authorizes the executive director to sign a grant agreement upon or approval of a project and the funding of the grant award. The following information is presented to the board for review and approval of the FPA Federal Section 5307 grant funds awarded to Skagit Transit. On December 27, 2020, President Trump signed the <clears throat> Coronavirus Response and Relief Support Appropriations Act of 2021 into law. FTA was allotted $14 billion to reciprocate the urbanized area and the rural area formula fund Skagit Transit is reciprocant of in the amount of 3,785,187 in FTA section 5307 funds <clears throat> funding appropriated to the Mount Vernon UZA. On March 11, 2021, President Biden signed the America Rescue Plan Act of 2021 into law. FTA was allotted $26.2 billion to the recipients of the urbanized area and the rural area formula funds. <clears throat> Skagit Transit is a recipient of $7,347,458 FTA Section 5307 funds <clears throat> apportioned to Skagit Transit. The funding is provided at 100% federal share with no local match required and it is available to support payroll and other operating expenses generally eligible under the FTA 5307 program to prevent, provide, or respond to COVID-19. Skagit Transit will apply the funds to operating expenditures in accordance with the program requirement. Operating expenditures incurred beginning January 20, 2020 for the rural and urban recipients <clears throat> are eligible, including operating expenses to maintain transit services, as well as paying for administrative leave for transit personnel due to the reduced operation during the emergency. Recommendation staff recommends the board authorize the executive director to execute the ban agreement. Okay, questions for Dale on this one. Well, I'll go ahead and start, Jill, if I can, because I, I requested yeah. that, Dale, that Dale put this on our agenda today. Um, you know, we've, there's been, I think there's a piece of this missing too. It, originally, for the first CARES Act, we also received $7 million. Is that correct? So this would bring our total revenues, actually, I shouldn't even say revenues, our total dollars received from the federal government as from Skagit County to about $18 million which is the equivalent of one and a half years sales tax revenues. We have been made more than whole on this whole COVID deal. There's no way I think we should be accepting these dollars. We don't need them. We just had our revenue report showing where after Arden's correction, $6 million over, you know, we've been made whole. I think it's unconscionable for us to say, yes, we're gonna, we, we want more money on this. I don't, I don't, I don't understand unless somebody else can tell me why we should accept these dollars, given the fact that where we are in correspondence with where our federal government is. You know, those folks in D.C. have a spending addiction, obviously, and we accept these dollars. We're doing nothing more than enabling that addiction. And I, I don't think, you know, somewhere along the lines, a group of elected officials need to stand up and say no more because they won't do it. They can't do it, regardless of party. It just it won't happen. So I, I think this is this is unnecessary for scheduled transit. Okay. 
other comments? Mayor Boudreau? Go ahead, Ron. Um, during that time that this funding is available, um, how much did we spend or how much did, you've got expenses for all this or we've already been covered for it, like Steve mentioned? We, we do have expenses. We've been pay, paying for our operating costs, the PPEs, um, for keeping our employer, employees employed. <laughs> It's allowing us to keep our local funds to keep the uh, movement of the construction of the new MOA moving forward. Dale or, or Arden, um, some of the reporting requirements on this. So I think my perspective comes from what the city has to report on with like Sarah CARES funding and with the new American Recovery Act. You know what type of reporting is required on the expenditures and then can it be used for construction and moving on the MOA, MUA, sorry. Wait. So uh, Mayor, let me clarify. So the, uh, I, I think when, when this whole CARES federal stimulus funding uh, came, you know, came up, what we, what the FDA made it clear, and I believe I mentioned this before, what they made it clear that we can use this for operations. And we clarified that, the entire transit agency clarified that. And so what this, the, year, the mayor section was right, at the end of the day here, we're going to be getting all more than 18 million from this federal stimulus that we would have had not have gotten in the past. So what this allowed us to, so we charged payroll uh, because we payroll that otherwise we would have used sales taxes for. And therefore these sales taxes in the, in the amount of $18 million we're able to put in our reserves, unless the, as Dale mentioned, uh, for several years now, we failed to obtain the, uh, the build grant and the tiger grant in the past that, that we tried to pursue for the construction of our MOAT project. And like I said, that Dale said, now we have enough funds to move forward with phase two, which is $10 million. And we're trying to pursue enough grants at this point. Hopefully one of them will, uh, will come through for us to be able to, uh, to use this, this $18 million plus the, the plus uh, a grant that we pursued to be able to finish this uh, finish this project uh, altogether. And that's that's what we've discussed so far. Okay. So so Arden, if I can, so so we're gonna use these dollars to make up for grant funds that we weren't otherwise awarded based on the project itself. Yes, yep, you're absolutely so right. it, it didn't qualify, there were other more deserving projects. And so now we're going to supplant these dollars for that purpose. I, I this is, this has, I mean, I don't, I don't know what our business plan is as, as an agency. We're going to wait for another pandemic in five years to line our, our, our reserves again. It's just, it's very troubling to me when we need to put this, I'll put, I'm going to put this in perspective for you real quick. In the last 52 years in the United States, 52 years, I'm 54 years old, nearly every year I've been alive. We've had four years, we've had four years of a budget surplus in this country, 1998 to 2001 during the dot-com bubble, okay? The average budget surplus was $140 billion. With our current debt of $28.2 trillion, we would need to, at 0% interest, we would need to make that same budget, have that same budget surplus for 201 years in a row almost as long as our country's been, we've been a country. And when you figure an interest in that, we would never pay it off because that 140 billion, it, it's $1.2 trillion in interest every year. It's just, so this is where we, and, and this is not, saying no to these dollars won't impact, it, it, minuscule impact on anything, but somewhere, somewhere, a group of electeds need to show the leadership to say, no more, we can't afford this. We're okay on our own. We're, we're, I just, I don't know. It's just immoral to me. I can't, I don't want to go home to my kids today and say, Hey, you know, look, what look what we did today. And that's exactly what we're doing. So some of the thoughts that I would think of, of Steve, I think I, I would say I share the same concerns about the, the dollars that may be coming to groups, whether it's, transit or governments or whatever that have weathered 
coronavirus better than what anticipated. So I, I understand what you're saying. I think the fact that we have the need of the MOA, we would be applying for grants in other pockets of funding and trying to compete with larger entities. And I don't think when we look at grants and from, from our federal government that more deserving projects get funded. I just don't, I don't believe that. I believe it's really kind of the luck of the draw because there's way more need on projects than there would be on grant funding if this was a normal year. So the fact that we can help our community and not have local debt um, that it is it is spread out over the country, but that we can get something that we have needed and that we have planned for carefully, um, using that funding to do that for the benefit our, of our community. I am okay with that. And it's because I don't think if we returned any of this money that it would make one bit of influence in the federal government. I just don't, and I wish it would, and I hear you. I just don't think it would make um, any kind of an impact. And so for us to make some decisions to use it as wisely as possible, um, I think is what I see my job as a leader is in this decision. So I don't know. Well, I'll, Jill, I'll, I'll respectfully disagree with you because that, that's exactly the type of thinking that's gotten us in this position, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as we're going to join everybody else and, and, and have this gluttonous attitude that, yeah, we're going to take it because somebody else will get it. We're not, I mean, it's just hastening our demise overall. And it's just, I think, I think it's a, I think it's a morality question. Honestly, I really, really do. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, you know, to, to the MOA, you know, in, in my opinion, buses were running yesterday, buses are running today, buses are going to run tomorrow. So it, to use this for a want more than a need, something that's critical to these dollars should be used, in my opinion, something critical to the COVID um, response. And that's not it, in my opinion. Other thoughts? Um, I, I, I struggle like you have, Steve, big time. I even said to Commissioner Wieson a few weeks ago that this isn't sustainable, you know, long-term for our country, or our kids. But then I'm also sitting here going, I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm torn. It's, it's, we're not going to make a difference one way or the other with how we vote today to the big picture. Um, so I know that's not helping, <laughs> but it's real and it's it's you know it's a national problem. I mean, for generations, you're correct. But I also think the work we've been doing over the transit is important and how many more years are we gonna go without what we plan to do? So, so I guess I'm torn. Lisa, go ahead. Sure. Joe, we're yeah. not accepting public um, comment. I'm, well, ask well, I'm asking Commissioner Janicki for her to speak. Go ahead, Lisa. You know, I, I do agree that this is um, a really important decision point, but, you know, transit overall, and there has been, you know, incredible dollars, um, uh, you know, put into uh, transit that's available for transit now. And yes, it's borrowed money. Um, I also think that overall, I guess, you know, Earth Day is tomorrow. The investment into transit and better opportunities for our um, poorest served members of community is so important. Every day, I you know I hear, I wish there were more bus runs. I wish we could provide you know um, service in areas that just because you know it, it ridership isn't consistent enough because the routes aren't consistent enough you know we're always doing that chicken and egg thing of um of not having enough uh of buses so i think there is incumbent upon us is to make an investment that you know far outlasts any of us on the zoom meeting will will be in office and if in fact this is the funding mechanism supplanting the dollars from sales tax allows um the 
the construction of the MOA and we get that, um, that efficiency, that expansion, that location um, for, uh, for Skagit Transit, and it's not you know, currently split between two locations, which doesn't make sense at all, it's been a long time coming. If we accept these funds, I'm not sure why we'd still be asking for additional federal community program money, but um, I would call this, a, you know, the certainty of this funding um, is, um, I think we can get the body of work done that has been long in the planning and just <laughs> waiting for funding levels. So, but I do, with all of that said, I do have one um, question because I know under uh, our budget for federal grants and contributions, we always budget for a certain amount of operating expenses and a certain amount of um, capital contributions. And so does this um, American Rescue Plan money or the CARES or the um, December 20, 2020 monies, does, is any of that what was in this budget of four and a half million dollars operating assistant or six million dollars of capital contributions? Or is, or is this allocation, I assume, just on top of everything that we had budgeted when we put this budget together? It's on top of this, yeah. It was not included yeah. on, on the last annual budget that we passed. It's, it's not, it's not, it was not, it's on top of it. Okay. So, um, Steve, I, I, a moral imperative is always in front of us. And right now I think the moral imperative is, is is serving underserved populations in our county with, with a reliable expanded transit system. So I, I'm gonna be voting yes on this one. Okay, any other comments from the board? Ron, I, you unmuted, I'm not sure if you were- Yeah, one other question, um, you know, this money, American Rescue Plan, so it's coming directly to us or does it go to the state first and then us? It's, it's coming directly to us, Commissioner. Yeah, and I, you know, I agree with Steve's uh, notion there. And you know, the problem with not accepting this money, our citizens are going to get taxed to cover it anyway. And so, just because we say no, I mean, this discussion should have been made back in Washington D.C. when they voted on this plan. I mean, there's an awful lot of things in the plan there, um, but we're all going to have to pay for it next generation or three or four generations in the future. So. Um, I agree, and it's money that, like you said, we don't really need, but it's not like we can tell our local citizens we didn't accept this money, so you don't have to pay that tax in the future. So uh, thank you very much for bringing it up, Steve. So, you know, you know, we can always justify the money where it should go. I mean, there's, there's a justification for everything, but, you know, again, it, it either... I don't know. I've said enough. Either, either going to be on the side of, of standing up and and, and 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 make. You're right. It's not going to be impactful on the overall scale of over 1.9 trillion dollars, obviously. But damn it, sometimes somebody has to stand up and say no more. We can't keep doing this. And and this is an opportunity, given where we are currently financially, we're in good shape financially because of all the other grants we've already we've already gotten from the federal government. You know, I. If not now, we'll never do it. That's all I gotta say. And this this is the time to say no. Okay. Any other thoughts? So I guess oh, go ahead, Peter or Commissioner Browning. Yeah, no, I yeah, Peter's good. <laughs> I I really agree with Steve, but on the other hand, if we're gonna try to make a flash, if we're gonna try to make a, a noise or a message with this then let's plan it and let's do it in a way that we're going to actually have some impact because uh, essentially this is going to just go down in history as, as a noise that never was heard. And that would be frustrating for me. So um, I like the idea of being, of kind of talking back to our legislators and saying enough is enough, but I want it to be in a way that, that it does start some some dialogue that it really becomes part of a of a bigger discussion and not just us not having the money for something that I think we can I agree with uh, with uh, Commissioner uh, Janicki that this is to be used for if it's going to be used for people who are underserved it serves us a good purpose in our community 
So I want this to be something that is meaningful so that people talk about it and we start having a good dialogue and this is not the time. So I, I would vote for it. Dale, I'm hoping you can clarify. So I just wanted, as chair of the board, it is my understanding that in accepting this funding, our intention is to use it for um, outlined needs to cover for the expensive, but also as an allowed use to put it towards the, the final dollars for construction for the MOA. Is that, that is my assumption and understanding, but I just wanted to ask about that because is that, that that's fair that's correct and if we were ever to you know we purchased this land in 2015 to build the, the new moa which we're splitting at the seams as every board member knows we're, we finally are able to do that without going to the taxpayers and say we need a sales tax increase to build a building and when our feeling internally is we go out and ask for a sales tax increase it's got to be service on the street and that's, that's down the road, but there, there is, as it's been pointed out by numerous board members, there is a demand out there for unserved areas that we we got to be planning to service in, in the not too distant future. Okay. And so the reason why I would support this is because of those, that it is going toward a capital investment to allow us to continue serving that we have been planning for several years. Um, and I look at it as a need to go forward because of that, and that we would go to the federal government to fund this one way or another. And so to be able to, to use this funding for that, in my mind, does make sense. And it is a broader discussion with our elected uh, or delegation in the federal government to express our concern about further spending, as this spending has already been allocated by the Congress. That would just be my thoughts on it. So. 18 million is our limit. No more. Don't give us any more money. We won't take it. I don't see why that's not I mean, an option to say to them that we have we have allocations that have well, covered I, I, expenses that you, we need. You understand? I mean, I, yeah. Okay. All right. So with this, though, we have been asked that this be a board action to authorize uh, the executive director to execute the grant agreement. Is that, has, I'm sorry, is that, has that motion been made? Or are you looking for that? Motion? No, that's what the request is, that there would be board action to accept or not accept this um, grant out funding. So I move, I move to accept the staff recommendation that the board authorize the executive director to uh, execute the grant agreement. Okay, thank you. I will second that motion. Okay, oh. so there's a motion by Lisa and a second by Lori. Any other questions from the board? All right, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay, opposed, same sign, please. Oh, no. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. All right, um, our other discussion item is 6C. This is the ward of FTA section 5338 funds. And I'll turn it back over to Dale O'Brien. 5339 funds. Oh, sorry, 5339 funds. The following is presented to the board for approval of the programming and ward of 2020 U.S. Department of Transportation funding. Federal Fiscal Year 2020 Federal the FTA Section 5339 Bus and Bus Facilities Funds passed through Washington State DOT to Skagit Transit in the amount of 116,891. Skagit Transit will use these funds to assist in delivering the following future projects. $40,000 for the purchase of reflective braille embossed bus stop signs. Gadget Transit will install the signs at existing transit stops. The signs lo is located on the pole will enable sight impaired individuals to recognize the site as a bus stop. The sign will be embossed <clears throat> with the route number serving the stop. The reflective sign can be spun to draw the attention of the transit operator so they know that there's a passenger waiting for the bus. 
$68,000 for the purchase of a passenger portal scheduling software. The software will add on to the existing paratransit scheduling software. The purchase includes installation and training services. The software will provide paratransit clients 24-7 access to schedule their paratransit rides. The software also can be accessed for clients to view their scheduled rides for verification of ride time and destination. Recommendation is we ask the board to approve this grant and allow the executive director to sign the agreement. Budget, in, budget impact project will be added up in the future <clears throat> annual budget. The funding source required requires the local agency of, to provide 20% of the project. The project will cost cost share will be an 80-20 ratio split. The total cost of each project estimated the following. The Braille stop sign, bus stop signs will be 40,000, 10,000 local, the total project of 50,000. The passenger portal scheduling software, 68,000, 17,000 of local funds. The, pro the total project would be 85,000. We're asking for board approval. Um, Dale, before we move on, it, the 10,000, that would come out of our current budget, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Questions from the board on this particular item. Let's see. Any questions? <clears throat> okay. Um, so this is a, a request for a resolution, is that right, Dale? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I'll ask the board if they wanna take action on this today. I'll move to approve uh, resolution 2010-09, which authorizes director to the to sign the grant agreement upon board approval for this um, federal uh, grant that Dale just presented. Okay, thank you. Second motion. that motion. Okay, uh, I think I uh, heard Peter on the second. So motion by Lori and a second by Peter. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 <clears throat> and any opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries, thank you. All right, moving on to item seven, it's our community advisory committee report and Judy is on the line. Thank you for submitting the written report. Do you have any comments you'd like to make, Judy? Well, I wanna thank you first. Um, as a blind bus, uh, part of the ridership of the Braille bus stop signs, I think that's wonderful. Now, all we gotta do is figure out a way to keep people from standing in front of them. So we can so we can actually get up there and read them, but I think that really is a great thing, and, and I appreciate it. As, uh, as far as the CAC goes, uh, we had a great meeting. Our next meeting is May the 11th. We invite any or all of you to come. Uh, we meet at 4:30. Zoom information is on the calendar, and we'll leave the light on for you. <laughs> so if you can come be with us on May 11th, we would be very happy to have you. Uh, this last meeting, we had Anna Ziffert, who spoke with us. She's with the Disability Rights of Washington, the director of the Disability Mobility Initiative. Uh, and of course, that initiative, again, is uh, working at trying to get sustainable funding for mass transit. Um, so that she, she was great. She had a lot to contribute. We had good question and answers on that. Uh, other item is that we decided that we're going to be meeting through the summer officially. So uh, there you have it for us. Uh, I want to know if y'all have any questions on the report. Okay, any questions on the report for Judy? Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, thank Judy. You. Okay, moving on then to item eight is our executive director's report. Dale, do you have anything to talk over with the board? Um, we have a bid opening for phase one. The board remembers that we went out and rebid it. That bid opening will be May 4th. 
Um, we will bring it to the board on May 19th for approval so we can move forward in um, hopefully June. And Skagit Transit continues to do the Friday home food delivery with the Cedar Lily Food Bank. Uh, we intend to keep that going as long as we can. And um, we do use relief money for that. Um, on a, a sad note, we lost one of our employees to COVID last Saturday. Um, so <clears throat> he's, he was a five-year employee, I believe. Yeah, yeah. so uh, unfortunately it, it hit home. Okay. Sorry to hear about that. Okay, any questions for Dale? Okay, um, with that, we've concluded our agenda items. So we will now then stand adjourned at 1.36. Thank you. Thank you.